the class so that these errors can be removed and the methods can be defined and the errors will automatically get removed okay so here we are within this color scheme class and now we have to code this color scheme to decide the color scheme for our app okay so as we all know that we gonna use rgb so rgb is a color format that we occasionally use in the programming so now i am uh, defining a method color change frame rate okay so the color was changing and shuffling into another color and there might be some particular time for that so here we, we have taken this like 20 milliseconds and then we have color change frame sequence okay now, and it will be taken at zero then we have public and paint as we are using the converse here okay so what was converse uh, doing at that place so converse is a a screen within that uh, visualization part okay so where we are drawing the lines and dots with the help of programming but that screen is a canvas okay and now we have to define the constructor for this color scheme also so I'm defining it like this we have color paint and then we have to design the stroke how much stroke you want for the width and then like I've taken it 1.5 but it will be taking uh, as the integer only so it's your choice either take it 1 or make it 2 okay I'll suggest to go with 2 or you can take the 1 also because 1 will be right if we can see okay then we have to set the color and then the color will be taken up from Android part and firstly we are taking the green and making it two to one okay I think one will be okay pretty good it will be then we have to do it for the circle paint also what does this uh, line paint and circle paint means that line paint was uh, meant for the left side of the screen where the chart is drawing whereas the circle paint is meant for the right side of the screen where the dotted part was there okay so we have to define all this paint and we have to set out the stroke for these things okay so now um, we have to give the color for this also so the color will be same okay it will be green and like that okay no issues so this color scheme is almost done and now let me remove this uh, okay then color paint canvas paint then we have to call out paint and now we have to give like this uh, dot uh, set color and then we have to set the color white for the screen part okay because there was the canvas canvas is the background okay and on the background the background color is white on the background these lines and circle dots will be uh, there and these are drawn purely by programming okay so now we have this shuffle as the color was changing and now we have like this so color change frame sequence zero zero and the sequence should be minus minus so that it can work according to timely okay now we have to return from it and if else if this condition is uh, true like then we have to return and in the else part we have to just set it out like frame sequence will be equal to the frame rate okay then we have this line paint dot set color and we have to take any random color so for that random color we are choosing this okay so for now let me see if we have chosen the random color but we have to call it out now and then uh, we, we have to do it the same for the circle also circle paint was also having the random colors okay so random color is a function that we gonna define so first me let me take it like this here it is a private and then random color and then by the help of uh, random 
variable we will be able to choose the color from the RGB scheme so here I'm making this variable but we have R already so make it R a okay then we have R dot uh, next int now within this next int we have to pass out like this uh, we are taking a pound upper bound of 255 as the RGB color scales from uh, 0 to 255 so we have taken it like this R a and then G and P okay no issues then we gonna return this but uh, within the return scheme we have to pass out like color then dot RGB and here we have to pass out all these three variables so that uh, it can be taken out from the random things for the particular color so this is the completion of this uh, color scheme class and here I'm scrolling it if you got any error then you can correct it okay and uh, now this part is completed now we have to move to this dots point array class okay so within this class what we gonna do the thing is simple first we have to declare some variables and making them final and it's an array float array and it will be taking out as buffer array okay again what we got next after this so why it is showing error actually so it is not defined yet that's why once we defined all these things then all the things will be okay and we have like buffer size like uh, we have num values per point okay then num points per elements will be there and finally we will be having the num points so num element okay so how many number of elements will be there then their points per element then their values also we are having the current position and this is a dots point array uh, which is a constructor and within the constructor we have to pass out some parameters and that parameters will be um, elements and num points per element okay so within this constructor we just have to um, map all these things okay so I'm calling this uh, num like this so this is calling the another constructor actually so we have to uh, create that constructor within this class also okay no issues then uh, once constructor is done and then we have this one okay this is the another uh, constructor and within this constructor we are having num elements and then we gonna have num points per element okay actually the screen the phone screen is divided into pixels not the phone screens every screen in this digital world is like the small unit of the screen called a pixel so here we are working on the pixels and we are taking care or uh, making sure like elements how many uh, pixel elements and like how many points per pixel will be there and then their values okay so you can say pixel per points not points per pixels because pixel is the smallest unit actually so now what we gonna have this buffer size and making this like this uh, num elements we have so just we have to do some mathematical equation here to get the particular size for this buffer okay and then after this we have buffer array and within the buffer array we gonna create or define this array and that array size it's obvious it's the same as per the buffer size and buffer size is taken at from the multiplication of number of elements number of points per element and number of values per point okay so point you can uh, take up as a pixel okay so now these 
two constructors are done and after this uh, constructors we have to define another function and that function is called add function okay so actually this class name is dot points array and we are working on the pixels and we are taking the float arguments within this and what these three dots actually three dots means like uh, how many parameters that you want to pass out of float type you can pass okay it will not so any error for that okay so now i'm taking number of input values from the argument uh, length like if the user pass out uh, five or six uh, parameters then we'll be taking care of that with the help of that argument length okay so this loop will go up to num input values okay so how many values will be there we're gonna operate on that values within this for loop and within this buffer array we have to add all these things uh, taken as the current position plus i to move to the next one and divided or uh, taking the reminder uh, modulo from the buffer size and making it equals to the argument first okay so here you can see current position and the current position you can see current position plus number of input values and then we have to take out the modulo for that from the buffer size and here almost done and we're gonna return uh, true with this okay so this is all done and now uh, there's one more function left out this gonna return the point like float array get array this class already named at dot point array so it's obvious we have to return some array and we are making the vector out of it okay so vector if you have uh, read in c plus plus then you can understand it's a custom array of any type so that's why we are uh, defining the array of dots point array class okay that's why uh, we have to make this like get array uh, we are returning the indexed array from the zeroth position and then we are taking this uh, get indexed array and we, we have to return the array type as float so now to pass out like start index okay and then we're gonna work within this function okay so here we are within this function and now we have to code this so we have to first of all take out one another float array for the output okay so output buffer and within that output buffer uh, we are defining this array of buffer size and then we have the actual position and actual position will be equals to first we'll be taking it as uh, at zeroth position and then we have to define this uh, for loop okay so for loop i think we have to begin with with i so that i cannot confuse with this nested for loop yes this no loop will be nested uh, with the loop variables i and j and the first loop will have the upper limit up to number of elements then we have this j this is the nested part of this loop and this will go up to number of points per element okay number of points per element and then we have to do just j plus plus here and here we have to uh, do operations with this actual position and what we are doing we are just uh, taking the actual position of the babe how with this mathematical operation that we gonna take the particular position with this so that the wave can form and dotted things can be separated okay then within that output buffer as the position of actual we are just storing the index i plus start index then we're gonna make another loop and this is the loop for this uh, thing 
and here you can see that uh, I've taken the variable for this uh, loop k as k and for what we are doing first we are traversing with the help of number of elements then we are traversing number of points per element then we are taking number of values per point okay so as we gonna go with number of uh, values per point we are incrementing the actual position and then storing it within that output buffer okay how we gonna store this this is this is gonna sco stored with the help of mathematical operations so that the value can be different that can be resulted in different positions on that visualization screen okay so here we are returning this output buffer from here and this class called dots point array is almost uh, done and but we are having two errors I think within this and uh, we have to check out like uh, what kinds of error that we are facing within this okay so first error was this uh, we have forgot to add these brackets so all the errors are removed now I'm scrolling it and if you get any error then please pause the screen and make sure that your code is correct your typed code is correct okay and after this we have to move out and where we have to move out uh, we have to move out uh, within this uh, main activity I think but uh, we have the dots class okay main activity and within the main activity you can see that thing but uh, firstly I'll be showing you this color visualization and here we are also having the error okay so by having the wrong spelling we have to type the wrong spelling here so that it can take the correct value okay so one error is removed also two more errors are there okay so this error is there and then we have this error so make that public so that it can be error free now you can see that this class is error free okay now I gonna just scroll it back so that uh, you can see there are no errors within this and then after that what we gonna do is to come within this main activity okay now